here in Australia. <laughs> All right, so hello everyone watching on YouTube. This is the beginning of the uh, the kind of YouTube recording. The show doesn't officially start. So you can see on Dave's handy dandy timer there for four minutes and twenty one seconds. So you're welcome to watch our pre show banter between now and then. Everyone's gathering their camera equipment. Today's show is about uh, what's in your bag. And a last minute emergency notice. I just told uh, uh, Tony, Mr. Tony Wang, to go get his stuff. Have you gotten it together, Tony? Yeah, it's actually not my regular camera bag, but I have a camera bag. Okay, good. <laughs> we'll Any old camera bag will do. <laughs> and I got a sneak preview of what's in Eric Chang's uh, photo bag. He sent me this. He sent me this photo. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but it's kind of one of those photos that you see, um, you know, just passed around the internet as uh, somebody that's really super organized, and everyone wishes they were that organized. <laughs> yes, I've been known to be organized. So just a briefcase full of lytros, <laughs> if only. Yeah. Yeah, that's all he's got is lytros. Um, so, um, Angela, you got all your stuff together to show off? Yeah, I have my bag. I actually don't really know what it's in it right now, so... Ah, <laughs> Ooh, surprise. My, right. Yeah, it'll be a surprise to everyone, so... Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's right next and, to me, though, so. uh, You have some photos to share with us? I guess everyone has a few photos together? Yeah, I'm getting them together. You guys all have your discoveries? Yes. Yes. Okay, my discovery is a, a rediscovery. That's okay. She's she's doing something cool, and I want to promote it. You'll have to wait till the end to see, though. It's a little teaser. <laughs> so you're not too far from me now, Michelle. You're closer. I know. I'm supposedly in daylight, but because it's a really dull day here. And I was actually going to try and do the hangout in my kitchen because that's got the best light at the time of the day. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I didn't get around to it. I was doing other things. Ah. I should try and move the laptop. Hey, Mike, are you winding down after that crazy week at the uh, photographer's conference? I am really, I, I'm kind of uh, relaxed. It's all over. I'm kind of enjoying back to regular scheduled programming. <laughs> was it was it more work than you thought it would be? I think it was a lot of work to put to try and put together a conference like that. Like I totally admire uh, Scott and all those guys for doing it several times a year. <laughs> yeah, they've got quite a machine, don't they? And I think they didn't have much notice for this. Usually they plan them out more in advance. Yeah, this was this was this was pretty. Uh, this was done in just a couple of months, so it came together, and I think it was a big hit. Everyone seemed to like it. I had a great time. Yeah, I heard good things about it. I saw some good stuff on Twitter. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, all right. Maybe we'll do another one of those. That's the last thing I'm sure you're thinking about, though, Mike. No. <laughs> right, now, right now, I'm actually just, right now, I've been doing a lot of, let's say, digital maintenance on the computer at home here. I've converted all my images to DMGs and been wow. dealing with backup stuff and Ambitious. messing around with the... Uh, Bookkeeping of photography, I guess. Ah, that sounds like not fun. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the thing we all spend way too much time doing. Yeah, it's amazing. I actually, this is we're I'm getting an intern this summer, and I'm going to give him the job title of um, data wrangler because I feel like I spend so much time just moving digital files around my home, my office, and the internet. It's just, it's, it's a kind of a, almost a full-time thing. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, we, that's actually the, the title credit we would give people in the visual effects industry when they first start out a lot of times. Just oh, really? Work. Yeah. Oh. You'll see it in film credits, and it's exactly that. It's the guys that deal with the backups and the organization and everything, but they're critical. Yeah. And it's really, it's, a, it's such a trial by fire, because it's kind of like, if you can do something like that, then, you know, you kind of feel like, They've got the maturity to get stuff tossed at them. All right. Well, our counter has reached zero, as uh, fellow photographer Ron Brinkman deftly uh, talked through it in a very interesting way. We'll officially begin the show now. Uh, welcome. 
this is going to be a very cool show. It's sort of a, a gear-heavy show. We're all going to show off what's in our bags and uh, talk through it. Uh, everyone that's watching live on uh, the Google Plus stream or any place else or YouTube live, uh, feel free to ask any questions you want to of, of me or anyone else. Um, and these hangouts are very loosey-goosey. You know, we, we will kind of go in a round table way to have people show off what's in their bags. Uh, but anyone can ask anyone any question any time. You know, if uh, Eric Chang pulls out something really mysterious and, and Angela doesn't know what, it is, she, know what it is, she can ask or whatever. So it's very, very loosey-goosey, just a good time. Um, and then all the photographers here will show off some of their latest photos, I hope. And then we'll end the show with um, kind of Google Plus discoveries. All right, so let's start with a round of uh, introductions to see who, who everybody is. Um, let's start with, um, who, let's start with uh, Eric from Lytro. Uh, hi, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Eric Chang, Director of Photography at Lytro. Um, and uh, I'm also publisher of wetpixel.com, which is a community site for underwater photographers. Mm. Cool, and you are really an amazing uh, underwater photographer. I hate, oh yeah, I know you probably hate the photographer part. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I take pictures underwater. I, I shot professionally underwater. I shoot professionally. I, I keep using the past tense because I'm in an office a lot now. Uh, but for about 10 years, I was out roaming the world about half time taking pictures underwater. Excellent. Oh. Is there one of those underwater housings for Elytro yet? Uh, no, well, no, we're not selling one, and uh, to my knowledge, no one is yet, uh, but I'm sure someone will make one soon. Yeah, that'll be cool. Okay, next, let's say hi to um, Mike from Google. Hey, Mike. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the, the internet all said hello, but you just couldn't yeah. hear them. Oh, I, I, I'm sitting here. Yeah. I just got a new uh, walk-up intro to this tablet, and so I'm sitting here in the Hangout, and I'm sitting here just playing with the stylus and... Trying to get a feel for it. What size control. did you get? How big is it's it? It's a medium. Medium. It seems like a really nice size. Like I'm, I'm yeah. playing with it on my desk. I feel like if I got the large, I would have been. I would have had to dedicate too much desk real estate to it. Um, and the small was just a little bit too small. I was actually playing with it at the Google Plus conference uh, the other weekend. I kind of was like, yeah, that's it. I have to get one. So here yeah. I am. They're great. You you never go back once you convert to that. I I have the small one. You, usually, I like to get the biggest of everything, but with tablet, those Wacom tablets is sort of the opposite because you don't want to have to move your arm too far. Mhm. Mm and this is this is kind of a it's it's a really oh let's see here. Yeah, medium's good. I like medium. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad size. I mean, it, it's nice size, and it's the new one's got like the touch sensitivity to it, so that was kind of like a, a that was kind of a cool thing. You can actually like pinch to zoom in Photoshop the way you can like on an iPad or an Android phone or something. And that's, that's, pr that's pretty cool. Cool. Excellent. Um, all right. Next, let's say hi to Angela. Hello, Angela. Hey, everyone. I'm Angela. Uh, my website is abpan.com, and I'm an HDR photographer like Trey. Ah, okay. Yeah. Hello, Angela. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and now, let's say hello to Ron from This Week in Photo. Hey, Ron. Hey, my name is Ron Brinkman, and like Trey said, I'm frequently heard on the This Week in Photo blog. I'm, I'm sort of a hobbyist photographer in terms of most of what I do, but my background is doing a lot of imaging and visual effects stuff. Uh, and I just started up a little company for doing I, iPhone apps. We have our first photography related one out called Freeze Paint as well. So I'm spending a lot of time, almost uh, a lot more time these days looking at the pictures that some of our users are sending in from this app than I've been taking my own photos, but try to get a little of that in still too. All right, excellent. And uh, then we have two people from, you know, they were just sort of like these producers, right? But now this year they've sort of become more and more photographers. Um, and so they're going to, I hope, share their bags and some photos today too. Uh, over in the left with the beard is um, Dave Veffer. Hey, Dave. Hello, everybody. Um, if anybody's looking for me, you can find me at plusdave.com. And Dave, and, uh, I saw you... We're in the news. Oh, in the Colorado yes. one? Yeah, you were on like the NBC News or something about, and you had this very prophetic 
quote in there. What was Do you the remember? Quote? Something about hang out there, like sitting on your porch with a beer and. Yes. You know what you're about? Yes, he said something about drinking beer on a porch, and you you uh, said it's very like hanging out at hangouts. Yeah, because you can just have people walk by and be like, oh, look, Dave's hanging out on his porch. Let's go say hello for a little while, and then you can leave. You don't have to stay or whatever, and I think it's a very good analogy. Yeah, that was all about uh, uh, those fine art hangouts that Daniel does, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah, Digital Painting 101 is an awesome show that he does almost every week. Yeah, it's excellent, excellent. He's a good guy. All right, and um, last week, Tony. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm Tony uh, at Twit, and uh, I'm a producer here, like Trey said, and I take pictures for fun. I've been doing yes. it for a long time, but never gone pro, so. Cool. Well, yeah. uh, being a pro isn't all it's cracked up to be. It's good just to do it for the love of it, I think. Yeah. And you, uh, you said you don't have your main bag, but you've got kind of your backup bag you're going to show us today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There it is. Holding it up right now. Hold it up again. A sneak preview. We should, we should have a conference uh, to see. Very tiny can, bag. I bet you have a very. Can identify the brand of the bag that's held up before anybody tells what it is. <laughs> yeah, I know all photographers are just as interested in the outside of the bag as the inside of the bag. Right. Well, uh, I don't really have a particular order to go through here. Um, why don't we? We'll start with. Uh, Eric, do you want to go first, and then I'll show some stuff. Okay, yeah, you forgot Michelle. Oh, Michelle, you're so dark there in the middle. <laughs> forgot about you. For a minute, I thought you were just like a blacked out screen. Okay, here's, here's <laughs> Michelle Robinson representing the entire country of Australia tonight. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> So go ahead and tell us about you and where people can find out about you and, this, and what you like to do and that sort of stuff. Ah, uh, I do the wacky Instagram mobile art photos. I photography. So that's why I went, <laughs> because that's an app I've never heard of, FreezeBait. FreezeBait. Uh, You're going to go get it. Yes. I feel will. I'm Feel free to say that as many times as you want during this entire hangout. I won't complain. Sure. Oh, once I use it, and that's it. And because I do edit notes um, when I post on Google+, Plus, um, and people are, tend to be very interested in the processes. Um, and, um, yeah, and I am just, I don't like being called a photographer <laughs> or an artist or anything. So I'm just a mom. And I just happen to do a lot of, at the moment, a lot of mobile photography. Cool. Ron, you should send her a, a promo code. I know you're sitting on 50 promo codes there. You're being so stingy. I'm sitting on about five left, but, you know, I will five happily. Left. So you, uh, only get, you only get 50 every time you do a release. That's the max, and then you use them up trying to send them to press. But we're doing another release soon, so I will happily send a promo code out. Uh, I'll, okay. give, I'll give a promo code out on this show. This, this Whoa! Show. The first person that posts a picture of, I don't know, come up with something random, Trey. Someone that posts a picture of, of the Hangout. Here How about go. that? Yeah, do something I'll, crazy with uh, I'll get their info and I'll, I'll, give them a, uh, I'll give them a promo code, too. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, cool. All right. So, well, you have to monitor that, Ron. I can't. Uh, All right. Well, I assume it's going to be in the stream and I can look at it later. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Okay, so Eric, let's see uh, what is in your bag. If it's if it's anything like your awesome apartment back there, <laughs> wherever you are, we all have high expectations because you seem to be um, quite the uh, man about town with that pad there. Right. <clears throat> well, I have, I, I think, a couple dozen photography bags, and so I wasn't really sure, you know, what to bring to this. To this hangout. Well, yeah, I I, I like them. <laughs> and um, uh, so what I decided to do was to take the bags that I carry around now in the state they were in when you sent the invite, which was you know two days ago or something. And I just took everything out of the bags and put them on the floor and took a picture. Um, so first I'll show you the bags. <coughs> this is my trusty little Domkey F4AF 
bag. Um, I bought this in 1999. Wow. It's still going strong, except this strap is sort of extremely frayed, so I assume it will break at some point. The other bag I carry around, because as I mentioned, I'm in an office a lot these days, is this in-case backpack. And I'll show you what's inside of these two bags. These are really the only two bags that I carry around these days, unless I'm traveling for photography. So I'm going to share um, my window here. Okay. Can everybody see that? See it. Okay, great. So these are these, these two bags on the ground, and I just kind of deconstructed <laughs> them. And um, so this is now the main bag, the in-case bag. Uh, and what I have in this in-case bag is, you know, a computer, an iPad, kind of all this computer support stuff. Um, you know, stuff for taking trains like earplugs and gum, of course, and uh, emergency 3D glasses, you know, as you have. And, um, and then in the top, there's this little Eagle Creek bag. And in that bag, so that Eagle, Eagle Creek bag actually goes in my backpack. And inside that little Eagle Creek bag is a little Sony NEX7 with three lenses, a Lytro camera, um, a little tripod, a, a glyph for my iPhone for iPhone support, and a little um, Olo clip, I think that's what they're called, right? You know, those little wide angle adapters for the iPhone, you know, pen, some cables and stuff. Um, is that the one that you got from, uh, what's that, Photo Dojo? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, and then in this other bag, which you may have not even seen because it was hiding here, which this bag right here where my mouse is, uh, that's another little Eagle Creek bag, and that's when I have, I have lots of cables in here. So, you know, I give a lot of presentations, so I have micro uh, mini display port dongles, and it's funny, I have a couple rolls of film because uh, I've been shooting with a Lomo lately. So it's a little, that was actually a surprise when it came out of that bag because I'd forgotten they were there. Um, lots more cables. This thing, this little turbo here, this is an Elgato turbo encoder, which is an H.264 video encoder so that I can do deliveries, video deliveries from the field if I have to send in low quality stuff. And then these are actually the things that have saved me the most. These little USB sticks, this is a Mac, this is a bootable Mac rescue thing. So it's, I have Mac OS on here with a lot of, um, you know, like Disk Warrior and stuff like that. And then this is a uh, Mac OS 10 Lion install SD card. And so these have actually saved me in the field. I had a computer overload and fry out in the field. I had to change a drive and I, I couldn't do anything, so I booted with this little USB stick and was rescued. In that little dumb key bag, oops, here we go. I have a Canon 5D Mark III, uh, extra battery. Um, this is these are the two lenses I've been using the most recently: the 50 uh, f 1.2 and the 135 f 2, and another Lytro camera, uh, flash, extra batteries. Um, pretty lightweight here. And that's what it all looks like when it's all spread out. I actually couldn't believe how much crap I managed to stuff in these bags. <laughs> how do you like the Mark III? Uh, I love it. Um, yeah. yeah. Did you have I the Mark II before? I did have the Mark II before, um, but I took a detour and had the 7D for a while for, for underwater photography. Okay, cool. And speaking of underwater, uh, really quickly I'll show you the cases we use, what I tend to use. Um, on the left is a Samsonite uh, Flight 31, and on the right is um, this little Low Pro Pro Roller 3. Um, but they're both about 18 pounds empty. The, the Samsonite's actually like 12 pounds or something, but you have to put in padded foam so you can see what is inside these things. So that that's the Low Pro. Here's the Samsonite with Pelican foam. And then when you load them up, this is what they look like. So that's an underwater housing in the middle and dome port and then strobes here, three strobes, um, all the arms, articulating arms and tr um, clamps that we use and all sorts of other stuff, ch chargers, extra chargers, extra ports. Um, I actually labeled them at one point for a story so you can see what we bring. And then in that other case, this is how this is how I pack it these days because it looks <coughs> like so you can't tell that it's a photo photo bag from the outside. Um, so you can see there's uh, you have to be pretty organized. This is 
you know, this this is the cheapest part. This is like a ten dollar Tupperware type thing, full of stuff. And here's my lovely wife showing <laughs> that you can, in fact, carry both of these at once or drag them along. Um, and I also use these think tank bags. So these are this uh, system here. This is a big backpack and an and a over the shoulder bag. And actually, I can actually fit a full underwater setup here um, without any any spares. So here's the inside of that backpack. You have a housing, a big dome port, some extra drives, two bodies. There's one body here and one body in the housing. Um, and then I pile a bunch, you know, more crap on top of that dome port and the computer goes in the front or in the top. Uh, and then this other bag, this is the Low Pro. Uh, it's one of their Stealth series bags. Um, and uh, it, you can put lots of stuff in here. And it just looks like a computer bag. All right. So, so that's it. Uh, Eric, uh, you win. By the way, uh, <laughs> the rest of you aren't this organized. I'll be really yeah, disappointed. Nobody wants to go after you. I'm sure I don't even have to ask, and I'm sure nobody <laughs> wants to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and declare you the winner. It's the first <laughs> right. time a man's got more bags than a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe, but we're not counting shoes. We're counting bags. <laughs> yeah, handbags, bags. Yeah. <laughs> You've got more than I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's really in touch with his feminine side. Yeah. Yeah, right. And then he yeah. makes his wife carry the bags. <laughs> Demonstration purposes only. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so hey, I had a, a question come in here on uh, my Facebook page. This is better for you, Eric, because uh, you're a Canon guy. This is from Brandon B. Wow uh, Gasparin. He says, "What kind of portrait lens do you recommend for Canon users that is also a little versatile?" Portrait lens that's versatile. Uh, well, I guess the one that comes to mind immediately is the 70 to 200 f 2.8, which is you know a staple lens, and I mean I, I use it all the time, and it it's a perfect focal length for for portraiture, uh, and lets you do lots of other things with it. It is a little expensive, um, but there's also a 70 to 200 f 4, um, which is much uh, cheaper, but also high, very high quality. Others have opinions. Uh, if you, I think well, there's two versions of the 2.8, so if you want to save money, you can get the old version. Um, it's about a thousand dollars less than the new version. And that, that's actually what I have, and I, I don't see any real reason to upgrade because I still love it. Yeah, I have the 7200 f/4 with the stabilization, and I think that it lenses, it's it's gorgeous. So I I I use that lens all the time. I'll go ahead and put in a vote for uh, if you're shooting on a crop sensor camera where you got the 1.6 sort of multiplier going on, then uh, I actually use my 50 millimeter 1.4 quite a bit. I find it to be a nice length for portraits because it ends up being about the equivalent of about an 80-85. Not bad. And I've also used a lot. There's a 100 millimeter macro. It's just a really nice lens. Um, I don't have it right now. I ended up loaning it out somewhere. I'm not quite sure where it's gone to, but I like that a lot. Cool. One, of the other, one of the other ones is just pretty good. I know Thomas Hawk uses it all the time. It's the Canon 135 f2L. Yeah. I mean, it's an L series lens for like under a thousand bucks, which it's ridiculous that that actually sounds cheap. But um, compared to other stuff, that, that that's kind of a cool lens and uses it for a lot just walking around, uh, walking on San Francisco. So you can probably get some extra use out of that too, and that's a great port portrait lens as well. That's my current favorite portrait lens. I, it was in my bag and. And it's incredible for the price. What wasn't in your bag, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Lots of stuff, I guess. He knows. He's thinking about everything that's not yeah. in his bag. That's what photographers do. You think about what is not in your bag. And if you have one spare pocket, you think, hmm, what could I fit in there? That's how it is. Um, OK, so I uh, put up a video today of what's in my bag. I'm not going to show the whole video, because it's ten minutes long, uh, but I will go ahead and show the first uh, first few minutes of it. I'll just kind of share the YouTube page here, and then uh, if people have questions, just go ahead and submit them. We're watching the YouTube comments. We're watching uh, all the comments in the streams um, everywhere. So post them, and then Dave here, Dave Beffer is keeping track of everything. Okay, so I'm going to try sharing my screen here. Screen share. Let me go over here to my... 
Hey. If it's okay, I'm it's actually going to try and move um, to the kitchen. <laughs> I've okay. just had all these text messages come in telling me you're too dark. Yeah, you're very dark. You make you make us some snacks while you're in there. <laughs> I will. I kind of like yeah. the effect of walking around carrying the uh, the laptop with you. You could do a sort of a running travel log. I <laughs> could. Cool. All right. Now here, let me press play here. Um, hey, make, make your browser window either wider or less tall, and then try full screening the video. Okay. Well, full screen will make it screen the whole thing, right? Let me see here. It's not bad. Um, I love it. Um, it's, um, I've been using it for about a year and a half or so. Um, I really put it through its paces. Uh, you know, I've never really... Uh, recommended a bag or anything because I cry so many. I love bags, but uh, this one's really been great. And it's confusing because there are all these straps and rubber and zippers and everything. It's like a great San Francisco party. <laughs> and uh, also, like any good San Francisco party, you can open it from the back, right? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then you see that there's like a, a bag within a bag, which is which is a little strange. But the reason they do that is because they have this modular system, okay, where you can slide um, the entire uh, bag out, okay, and you can replace it in multiple systems. It's called an ICU or something. I don't know what that stands for. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of an interchangeable unit. Interchangeable unit. That's probably right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here, here's what's in my bag, okay? This is the grand reveal. Um, Let's go in no particular order here. So this is my this is my main camera right now, an Nikon D800, and loaded on here I have a Nikon 14 to 24 lens. Okay. Uh, Anyone out there from Canon, see if this please fill this lens for us. Yeah, Canon people always really want this lens. Yeah, they, yeah, I hear that a lot. Seems like they could do that. You see there's a little notch knocked out of it. Curtis and I fell down some rocks in Virgin Court a few weeks ago, and I, I lost, <laughs> lost part of my head there. So I'm, yeah, so I ran dirty there. Um, this is the other main lens I use. You'll notice that in my camera bag for Nikon, I'm really only carrying two lenses, the 40 to 24 and the 28 to 300. Um, this is kind of a slow lens, but it's so flexible with the zoom and I'm always on a tripod. I don't really care if it's slow because I don't mind a nice long shutter speed. I'm not really looking for really shallow depth to be able to do this anyway. So that's why these are my, my two main lenses. This is a, uh, a really right stuff tripod and a really right stuff head. Um, of course, tripod has two parts, uh, the legs and the head. They don't have to be from the same manufacturer. It's sort of a, a universal head or a universal screw on there. You can put any head on. Um, I used to use a Gitzo tripod, but I think this one is lighter and stronger than, um, than its Gitzo counterpart. And it travels well? It's not too cumbersome for you? No, no, not too cumbersome at all. And, and oftentimes I'll hand carry this on. You know, I collapse it, of course. I hand carry this onto the plane. I put this on my back, and I'm good to go. So I used to have uh, a second body, like a, uh, I had a D3S. And I had many prime lenses for that one, like a, a 50 millimeter prime, for example. Uh, but now I take a lot of my people and things shots with this camera, with my NEX7. Um, this is a prime lens. This is a new Leica 1.2. Ah. Oh, <laughs> oh, yes. And just like the, the Canon people are jealous of us having the 14 24, I've always been jealous of the Canon people who have a 1.2. Um, so this is a little adapter on here. This is a, a Noble Flex adapter, and this is a 1.2 lens. It's manual, but that's okay. Um, it's fantastic. It's really great. And this NEX7 shoots a 24 megapixel, super sharp, very fast. It's a uh, just a fantastic camera. So so a manual lens, aperture and uh, yeah, right. You set the aperture there, and then you set the, uh, the focus with this thing. Are you yeah. using the focus beacon with that? I do use focus beacon. So I noticed that you don't have lens caps on any of the lenses. Ah, you, you noticed that I don't have lens caps on any of my lenses. It's true. I know this angers a lot of photographers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't, I don't do it. I don't put uh, 
the caps on the back or the fronts. Um, you know, they get a little dirty, but I just wipe them off. But it's fine. Not, not really about scratches? No, I don't worry about scratches. Because, you know, especially with the 1.2, when you shoot a shallow depth of field, I can even put a pencil right here, and you won't even see the pencil. And every so, garment that Trey owns is made out of microfiber. So right, right, right. <laughs> right. I've often in silk suits and so. no, I, I may be somewhere, <laughs> yeah. somewhere scratching against the metal or some other young No, I don't worry about it. Try yeah. fast and loose. No fast and loose. Yeah. Right. Uh, Again, no filters. No filters. I go commando just like a good technical party. Uh, so what else do I have in here? Uh, this is uh, this is my Lycro that I use. Uh, this is the kit lens for my um, NEX7, uh, which I have on there sometimes to do video. It's, it's actually amazing for a kit lens. I like it a lot. So that's basically it for the main compartment. <coughs> Okay, I'll unscreen share, and if people want to see more, they can uh, they can watch the full video. But uh, I did have one one question, or actually, there's a comment that came in uh, about that. It was from uh, William Bean, and he said, uh, you know, Sly was talking about he was lamenting there was no 14 to 24 for the Canon, and William says, uh, people of Canon. Uh, you can use the Nikon 14 to 24 lens on your EOS body. There's an adapter at B&H called NovaFlex Lens Mount Adapter. Uh, basically, that adapter lets you mount Nikon glass on your Canon body. I learned of it from a Canon user who is happily shooting with the 14 to 24. It's quite thin, and the 14 to 24 is absolutely worth it. So, thank you, William. Excellent. Well, uh, let me see. Who wants to go next? Any volunteers? Or shall I just randomly call on somebody? Mm -hmm. I'll go. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll Ron. Go. All right. If you guys watch chat, we'll figure out who's going to go next. Okay. There you go. I'll try to stay close to the mic while I do this. Uh, so this is, I grab, I, of course, like everybody, has multiple bags. But uh, I grabbed sort of my, my kind of favorite go-to bag for many years here. And um, this one's probably, I did a quick back of the envelope count, and I think this one's got about 12 or 13 countries on it <coughs> that I've traveled with. It's a small bag. It's from a company called Kata, which you know, I'm sure most people have heard of. They make some excellent bags. Most of the bags they make are you know, the more traditional bag fabric. But this one is uh, a line that they had for a period of time, and I think it's discontinued now, called the Sensitivity Line. And it's neoprene instead of that nylon sort of surface. So the padding is kind of part of the material itself. It's reasonably water resistant as well. Uh, and Don't I they also make uh, body armor for the Israeli army? Yeah, they, exactly. They're an Israeli company and they make body armor and camera bags. So that should uh, hopefully tell you something about the durability. And this one's been great. Like I said, I've had it. I've really slept it around a lot. And because of the neoprene, you can really just cram it a lot fuller than you can with a bag, you know, a regular bag just because this fabric will stretch quite a bit. So I just got back from a quick little trip doing, uh, running up and down the Oregon coastline. So I don't have a, I didn't take a super large kit along, and this was kind of my go-to bag. You know, I shoved this little fairly small tripod in here. This is uh, a Manfrotto tripod that's small and portable, if you can see it, but uh, it's got a okay ball head on it. It's not great, but it's nice for just sort of, if I don't want to have a full-size tripod with me. And in terms of the bag itself, like I said, it's it's small. Um, it's got room for a laptop on top in the back, which I don't have because it's sitting on the desk, but you know, I do have a few magazines, my new scientist. I have my little Kindle with me. But in terms of the meat of the bag, kind of two big compartments here. I'm hoping we can see everything here. And um, camera equipment, this is pretty much what I did <coughs> last week. So I went really minimal. I actually just went with my, my small uh, digital Rebel body, which is a crop sensor camera. And for the most part, just kept this one lens on it, which is the Canon 10-22. to So fairly wide, uh, similar to what you were saying, Trey. It's not a super fast lens. It's about a 3.5 uh, at its widest. But the 10 millimeter on this is like a 16 millimeter equivalent, so fairly wide. Uh, kind of thing. I kind of feel like I'm in transitional phase on cameras. I'm really waiting to see what the Micro Four Thirds kind of looks like. I've looked at the Sony that, that you were talking about, Trey. Um, 
And I just, I like the lens selection on the Micro Four Thirds, but I feel like, you know, the sensors aren't quite there. They are smaller sensors. So I'm trying to decide what my kind of ultimate travel lens set's going to be as opposed to my stay-at-home bigger camera lens and camera is going to be. So inside, you know, it's got all the usual stuff where you can have your extra memory cards. I carry a couple point-and-shoots as well. This is a Canon S95. And uh, I found myself also carrying, where do I have it? I still carry my old Lumix um, point-and-shoot. And the reason I carry this thing around is it had this crazy close focusing distance on it. So it's kind of turned into my quickie macro camera. You can literally focus up to about two millimeters away from the lens. So you can get extraordinarily close to things with it. And of course, it's you know a small sensor, so you've got decent depth of field with it. So I usually just pull this out if I want to do a really quick close-up and not stick a macro lens on the camera. The only other lens I took with me was my uh, the 50 millimeter 1.4 that I mentioned, which is you know good for low light and uh, sort of a utility sort of a scenario. Uh, what else have I got in here other than MacBook chargers and a little mini Gorilla Pod, tripod, uh, battery charger? I buy batteries and the battery chargers off of eBay. Um, batteries because they're just way cheaper. And this little charger, because it's a much more compact than what comes with the standard Canon battery. Uh, it's got the little flip-out plug instead of having all the cords and everything. But I personally recommend everybody buys replacement batteries off of eBay for the, you know, you can get, you know, for, instead of paying the $40, $50 that the manufacturers charge, you can get these batteries for literally about 3 or $4 a piece. I'd say of the 15 batteries I've bought, two of them have gone bad, so it's kind of worth it. That's a good suggestion. Uh, I need my so. Yeah, you know, it's so cheap. It's cheap enough that you buy several and you don't think about it. And if one of them ends up not having quite the same performance and goes dead quicker, then you just pitch it. Yeah. Uh, camera strap that I use most often is this Black Rapid, sort of a sling strap. I really like that. I find myself most of the time, I'm carrying my bag with me, I'll just have a little mini strap on the thing that I'll wrap around my wrist. But if I'm hiking a lot more and want to have a camera handy, then I'll put this black, black rapid strap on. Uh, you know, lens cloths, a hat, uh, <laughs> a little blower brush. And this, this is uh, the lowest tech piece of old equipment I have in here. It's just a mini slave flash. It has zero intelligence in it. It is purely... It senses another flash going off, and it pops at the same time. And I just use it like if I'm shooting, I don't know, like a statue or something like that. I have a pop-up flash on my, on my body, and I'll just hold this off to the side to get another angle of light coming in. Like I said, it's very dumb. You have to rely on your through-the-lens metering to kind of get it right. Sometimes you'll do it a couple times, but it's, it's such a cheap little thing. It just runs on AAA batteries that I just find it handy when I want to do a little bit of extra spot lighting off at a weird angle. And then I guess the rest of the stuff is sort of little tiny bits and pieces. There's this whole thing that you can pull out of the bag here. Just real quick, not much interesting. Headphones and more lens cloths and a spare disc. And this is key if you're traveling with a girlfriend. It's a headphone splitter so you can both watch <laughs> the same movie on your iPhone. Um, remote trigger, card reader spare batteries. This is a little Glyph tripod, just a, a phone tripod. still has a regular tripod screw on the bottom, but your iPhone just slides in there real nicely. And again, I found it a couple times where I just, for whatever reason, either testing my app or just because it felt like fun, I'll stick this on my big tripod and, and use it. Yeah, I think that's about the bulk of it. Call it done. Cool, excellent. Thanks, Ron. Hey, there's a there's a question here. You're probably good to answer this one. Mm -hmm. It's a very uh, this week in photo style question. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is from uh, Trisha Lombardi. I think this is on Google Plus. Uh, a request for advice. I am taking a safari with Joe and Mary and McDonald in November, uh, and then to Myanmar. I need to carry. I need a carry-on bag that can meet international baggage requirements. 
I can carry my D700, a D4, 7200 millimeter VR2, <laughs> and 200 to 400 zoom. Nice. I'll also wear my old school Nikon vest trap with the pockets full. I'd appreciate your suggestions. Thanks. Uh, well, I, first of all, I, I definitely agree with the trick of wearing a, a vest or a jacket or something where you can shove a whole bunch of extra stuff into it because it doesn't count towards your uh, your carry-on allotment a lot of times. You know, they'll, they'll look at your bag and they'll check on the size of that. But you can have another, oh, I don't know, probably 50, 60 pounds worth of lenses shoved into the pockets of, uh, of a jacket and they're not going to ding you on it. You just take the jacket off when you go through security. So I've definitely done that trick and it's a good one if you can't fit stuff in your bag. Um, I don't have a specific model number in front of me. I, like I said, I really like the Kata bags, but there's a few other things, but I would really kind of look at sort of what's the airline you're flying, or the, probably several airlines you're flying, find out what the minimum, or the, you know, the, the one that has the most restrictive requirements for size, and then get something that pretty much fits with, within that, you know, the, that kind of goes your limit of what you can get within that. I'm not a big roller bag kind of person, but I know a lot of people like that. International so, limit is seven kilos. Yeah, but it's more like I said, especially if you're shoving stuff into your uh, into your pockets to get around the the weight limit of uh, of what your carry on is, then it becomes more of a size issue. Of, you know, how how big can that bag be and still fit in the overhead compartments? But you need to also, you know, I've certainly if you're en going to places that are more out of the way and you end up taking these little puddle jumper flights, you're going to find that. You know, the, the rules are very variable. I've taken little little tiny propeller airplanes, you know, through like Venezuela or something like that, and they had very restrictive carry-on requirements. I ended up having to kind of repack and put some stuff behind and stick some stuff in the cargo pants and hope they didn't ding me on it. Because, you know, they're worried about the weight of uh, the person on the left side of the plane compared to the person on the right side of the plane. So hopefully my lenses didn't cause us to have to fly at an angle the whole way. I have a recommendation as well uh, that is perfect for um, what she's describing. Uh, so one of my buddies, Andy Biggs, started this company called Gura Gear, and they have a Kiboko bag, um, which is this bag that I'm sharing right now. And uh, it's big enough for a 600 millimeter lens on one side or like a 500 with a body attached. And on the other side, you can put another big lens with, um, with a body as well. And if you look at their site, they sort of show you how to pack it with, you know, giant lenses. Um, and this fits, it's slim enough to fit in the overhead or underneath your seat in even small planes. Um, and I, I love this bag. And they, you know, for some even smaller setups, they have this new, you know, Kiboko 22L, which, you know, is probably more suitable for that actual seven kilometer, uh, kilogram international limit. That's a great suggestion. I was I, I couldn't remember Andy's name when I was in the pressure of the moment, so I'm glad <laughs> you came up with it. That is a cool bag. Um, hey, so before we go on to uh, to Angela, so we'll go Angela, then Michelle, and then we'll do uh, Tony, then Dave. Okay. But while Angela gets herself together, I'll show up the window here. Eric is chatting to me. So here's so I'm in Queenstown now. Uh, here's what it looks like out the, the window. I'm, I'm renting this place while house hunting. And I know the update's a little, little slow, and it's awfully, it's an awfully stormy <coughs> day. Um, but you kind of get a sense. So this is the lake out here. This is called uh, Lake Wakatupu. Uh, there's the town down there below. That's Queenstown, sort of like a vale kind of ski town. And off in this distance is the other direction that it goes. Um, I'm out here on the balcony constantly taking photos in every direction, uh, morning, day, noon, and night. Uh, the clouds are always changing. It's very nice. And we might be getting snow today. Uh, we hope. My kids really hope for snow. So anyway, there's just a little view out my window. All right, Angela, uh, let us have it and share your stuff. All right. Well, this is my bag. It's a Tamrac Rally 6. I like to keep my bag small just because when I go out shooting, I'm usually by myself and uh, I don't like carrying, you know, a lot of equipment on my back. So I just keep it small and I try to keep as low as possible in my bag while I'm out shooting. So in my bag I have my Canon 5D Mark II. 
um, and attaches my 24 to 105 lens. And then I just have my remote trigger still attached. Uh, I have my 100 millimeter macro. Oh, this was packed. I was out um, at the beach last week, so this is basically still packed for when I was at the beach. So I have my 100 millimeter macro. Um, and really, that's the only like heavy equipment I have. I have like a waterproof bag because it was raining and while I was there. I have just a little bag where I keep my memory cards and things. Um, I have my spare battery. You know, like the pen. That's really it. I just don't keep that much in my bag just because I don't like carrying all that stuff. But the other stuff or the other equipment that I have that I just left at home is my um, 17 to 40 millimeter. The reason why I left this guy at home was because um, I'm about to send him back to Canon to get repaired. He's not. It's not focusing like the way it used to, and so I just wanted wanted them to check that out. Um, a lot of times when I go out shooting, I uh, take videos while I'm shooting, and so what I shoot my videos with is my uh, Canon S95. It takes really good videos there. And then I'm a scuba diver as well, so I have my GoPro, and I just usually have, I have an underwater housing for this, and usually this is all that I have for um, underwater videos. I don't shoot underwater pictures yet, but I want to. I really want to get into it. So Eric's equipment was awesome. I love seeing that stuff. So something to get soon. Eric, are you rolling your eyes at the GoPro? No, I use GoPros. I love them. I, I almost always have one on me underwater, even if I have a, a big rig. Yeah, I just keep it like attached to my vest for wherever I go. I have a question for you guys. Yeah, go ahead, Tommy. Um, is there a reason why you chose GoPro over like the Contour HD, for example? Uh, the reason why I chose the GoPro is because um, it's just so small and compact. I'm not sure what the other camera that you're talking about is, but this one is just so small and compact, and you can basically mount it wherever you go. So besides scuba diving, it takes like great other kind of adventure uh, videos. Okay. Yeah, I, I use it because it's really, really... Con I, I looked at the contour as well, which I think has the added benefit of actually being able to focus underwater out of the box, which the GoPro does not. So, you know, the GoPro housing, you require third-party housing or their dive housing, which they just released like two weeks ago to focus underwater. So I've seen a lot of professional photographers who are top side shooters who want to go underwater and they buy a GoPro. They do an entire shoot and they realize that their footage is 100% blurry because that tiny little, tiny little dome port but I think they're both great. Hmm. I've never heard of that contour thing. Interesting. Mm. All right. Uh, did we lose? We lost Michelle. Where'd she go? Mm -hmm. She disappeared. Okay, maybe she'll come back and talk the to us. The darkness about. swallowed her. <laughs> yeah, it did. She got swallowed up down under her. Um, well, Tony, do you want to share with us what you have there? Sure, yeah. I actually um, I didn't know we were doing this today, so... Uh, my bag is actually just packed from yesterday when I went shopping. So, uh, <laughs> it's full of, like uh, shampoo and shaving cream and what are you going to show No, us? no, it's a uh, it's a Domkey um, F5, I think. Uh, I just got this about um, less than half a year ago. So, and uh, it's just uh, big enough for uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but for maybe a body with a uh, lens attached, and maybe a smaller body on the side, I mean a smaller um, lens on the side. So I I have, uh, I got an Olympus OMD in here, actually reviewing this for our show uh, before you buy, so oh. I got that. I got my wallet, <laughs> I got an extra memory card here somewhere. Hey, George Costanza wallet there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trifold. And I got a, a pen, and that's it. <laughs> but usually, uh, I actually, yeah, I mean, I, I carry this with me every day. Um, I, this is the review unit. Um, I actually have a, a Panasonic GF3 with uh, a Nocton, uh, a Voilander, uh 
25 millimeter um, as my daily camera. So, yeah. Mm. And then for a cute little bag. If you don't watch out, it might get pulled into the orbit and gravitational pull of Eric's chain. Oh, I really recommend this camera bag because they actually have these um, these two strips right here. They're actually for grip. So they're rubbery grips, and they actually so the bag stays on your shoulder if you're wearing like a like a water, waterproof jacket or something. It actually doesn't slip off. So that's really awesome. I love that thing too. Yeah, it's it's like the best design strap I've ever used. So mine are almost my, uh, all gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, and for my full size camera bag, I have a flip side 300. So that's got the 5D Mark II and a bunch of crap in it. So cool. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Um, Sorry, so I disappeared. Trey. No, it's okay. We were about to go to you to. You can tell us about what kind of equipment you carry around, and then we'll go to Mike W. Oh, is it my turn? Yes, go for it. Ta-da! Can you see? <laughs> we see yes. tiger stripes and red stripes and black stripes. What, what, what different sorts of animals were killed to make that? <laughs> zebra stripes. No, beautiful... Sin oh, well, okay. There was a cow involved. Um... <laughs> My handbag. Um, I do have, you know, your usual Lopro 2, um, and they traveled with me. Um, but recently, I got the, last year, I got the um, outgoing uh, Olympus EPL1, shoved it into my handbag, even with the lens, the zoom lens, was very happy with it. But in this bag is this. Yes. The almighty iPhone with my precious G Plus sticker that's worn out. G Pl Google Plus, I need a new sticker. Okay. Um, <laughs> this, can you see it? Yes, your tripod. It's a tripod that I attach my mobile phone to. Um, and that's how I took a lot of my photos for day.org. Um, did you know about a day a day org? It was um, a photography a whole photo day organized by the Expressions of Human Time in Sweden, um, and there was a lot of uh, a lot of big uh, videographers and photographers, and including Desmond Tutu, who all participated in the on May 15. So I recorded my whole day um, by mobile. Um, what else is in my bag that I carry? iPad. Cool. Stylus. Mm -hmm. Headphones. But this is, and um, in there I have all my um, precious apps more apps than anyone can shake a stick at. Yes. But this is my, yeah, my power tool at the moment. Um, oh, cool. I've got well, my, I've, give us your favorite iPad app and your favorite iPhone app. The one that I use all the time, Snapseed. Ah, absolutely. Yes. Both on the iPad and on the iPhone. Um, that's the, my first, my workflow for all my um, mobile art is always Snapseed first. And then after that, whatever else comes next. Usually PhotoForge. PhotoForge is about as good as um, Photoshop, I think. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of um, similar ones. I've tried Luminance. Um, Iris is pretty all right, but PhotoForge is fast and it's powerful. And you can do and white, oh, keep with it. I know you like Everyone. to do black and white. I'll, I'll suggest one to you by this guy named Stu Mashwitz. It's called Noir. And oh. Yes, I have Noir. All my ah. black and whites usually are treated with Noir. Um, yeah. I did a whole series of uh, women portraits, um, all treated in the same style with Noir. Oh, cool. Well, you're way ahead of me on that one then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always looking for a new app 
to try and see, like, there's a new one that everyone's doing, um, using, called Marble Cam, which is really interesting. And that's the last photo I posted on my profile. Um, and what it does is it, it, it does almost like a fisheye. It makes, makes a photo look like it's suspended in the air, like in a marble. But I sort of took that to another place and did something else with it. And, um, yeah, you know, I always look for new apps and see what they do. But generally, I work with about three or four. Um, and then, of course, I do the what they call the less less edit type mobile photography shots. So usually ah. street, and um, I post all my street on IM, and um, all the mostly the art stuff on Instagram because there is um, I know of more artists there, and on IM I post all my street shots. Yeah. Are you in your kitchen now, by the way? Yeah, can you see oh, my... It's pretty my, dark in there, too. Is Australia having some sort of uh, power outage situation? No, I haven't turned on the light. Um, it's just oh. the, the natural light coming in from... Um, it, it's, it's a very grim day today. <laughs> but you can see, at least you can see my very well-traveled fridge with all my travel magnets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. All right, hey, Mike, are you uh, ready to show us what you got? Sure. So, let's see. I have a bag similar to somebody else's who's on here. Um, I have a Tamarack. Uh, this is a Tamarack Rally 5, I think. I think actually it's the 6. Mm -hmm. the yeah. I, I love this bag. This is actually, I, well, I probably have like six or seven different bags, but this is the one that I'm using now. Um, and I got this one over the previous one purely because this one has an iPad slot in the back. So, Inside of it, um, let's see here, there's a pa padded pouch in the top part that you can actually fit an iPad or if you had a really small laptop that would fit in there as well. I don't like to carry, travel with a whole bunch of gear. I try and go as light as I possibly can. I used to have like, I have a big Tamarack backpack that looks like you're going on safari and um, I have a think tank shoulder bag which can probably fit like two whole setups and um, I, pr I carry this one more often than not. This would actually be a think tank bag if they made one that was this size with a pouch. And when I bought this one, they did not, but apparently they have one now. So um, I, I have so many camera bags, I really can't say anything to my wife for buying uh, purses or anything like that because I think I have more camera bags. So I'll admit to that one. Uh, so <laughs> what do I have in here? So I've I've uh, I've been playing a lot a lot lately. And I've taken out some lenses, which I normally carry. So I've been actually carrying, uh, I have an old Canon 40D, which I think I told you, Trey, but I just had converted to be an infrared camera. I sent it away to LifePixel, and they pulled off the, uh, the visible light sensor uh, filter on there, and now there's a, uh, it shoots an infrared. So I've been How carrying this around just for fun. It was like 250 bucks. So... Yeah. Um, for camera, I really wasn't using that much. It seems like a pr it seemed pretty reasonable, and now I can do some, you know, play with infrared stuff with it. So it was kind of it was cool to play with that. Uh, let's see. I have a Canon 5D Mark III with the 24-105 on there. I I absolutely just adore this lens. I think I have this on there probably 90% of the time, no matter what I'm doing. I, I have other lenses, but this one is just like it's so practical and. Um, it, it's nice and sharp. It's great contrast, so I like that. Um, 7200 f4 with the IS stabilization. Uh, this lens is just great. The contrast, the colors, I, they're, they're just awesome with this one. Let's see what else we got. A little Think Tank uh, SD card pouch, which I've actually started using to store uh, international SIM cards. So when I travel, I have SIM cards for a couple of countries in Europe and stuff in there that I can just land and throw in a prepaid SIM card and get back on that without having to buy a whole bunch of data plans. Uh, microfiber cloth. And uh, let's see what else we got. Um, That's where I keep my SIM cards too, but I keep them in my... Or I'm supposed to yeah, keep them, uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like the perfect size pouch for it. Um, I always, I always carry a bunch of small USB cables. Uh, I never know if I'm going to lose one or I need to charge my phone or, or something. Um, 
This is actually kind of cool because this here is an adapter to go from mini USB to regular USB. And then this one here is the micro USB, uh, sorry, mi micro, mini USB, this one's micro USB, to regular USB. And, the, and what I was playing with this is, this can plug in here, this end now plugs into the camera, and this end can plug into the bottom of my Android phone. And I can actually use my phone as an intervalometer and some other stuff to actually control the camera. So that's kind of cool. You can do like crazy bracketing and some stuff that the camera might not necessarily directly support with Canon. I don't think they have a Nikon version yet. But which, that's which app do you use for that? What app was that? Uh, I have to look it up because I don't DSLR, remember. DSLR, DSLR controller. That's it. Thank you. I knew someone would know it. And uh, a Google Pen uh, shutter release, and I have a lens pen in there, so. It's kind of just what I stash when I carry and um, carry with me pretty much wherever I go. So that's it. Cool. Thanks, Mike. All right. Hey, Dave, you want to take us through what you got there? Sure. In your burgeoning, fledgling photography career? Career? I don't that's intend to make money. First things like photographers do when they get serious is they go buy a bunch of stuff. Let's yeah. See. All right. So I've got my Think Tank Retrospective 20, which I absolutely love. I've actually figured out how I can fit my tripod into this strap, which is not meant for anything on the side. So that's kind of cool. Look at that tripod. This is a, Whoa, that head. Yeah, this is a, um, it's a Korean brand called uh, Horus Benu. It's very wow. affordable. You can only get it on eBay. But the quality is, I'd say, just maybe slightly less than Gitzo quality. But this is a carbon fiber tripod. This ball head can hold, like, I don't know, 40 pounds or something like that. But it's... It's a good tripod for the money. I spent maybe a little over 200 for the ball head and the tripod together. Uh, so if you're looking for a good budget tripod, there you go. Go to you. What was the name of it? Horus Benu. H O R U S B E N N U. All right. So in the bag, I have my Rebel T2i with my 105 millimeter Sigma macro lens. It's my new toy lens hood. I have attached to the bottom of my camera, I have half of a capture clip, which is a cool thing. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but basically it comes with another half that I have currently on my camera, on my strap for my bag here. So I can clip my camera in when I don't feel like putting it back in the bag. I can just slide it and it's like locked in now. That's cool. So That's it's on there. That was really a good start thing, right? Yep. So now I just press a little red button, releases the camera. It's pretty cool. Now, another cool thing I have, which is similar to Eric's Black Rapid strap, I think it was Eric that was showing that, is uh, this is the Luma Loop, which they don't make anymore because Black Rapid started suing everybody. But, <laughs> yeah. um, I felt a little like guilty this, about that. But I like this one a little bit better. Um, it's got a cool little like military-style metal thing that attaches to thing. So now the camera's hooked on. You just press a button and it releases it real easy. So that's that. All right, what else I got in here? I've got my 17 to 50 Sigma 2.8 uh, stabilized. I have this is my 17, my uh, 10 to 20 wide angle Sigma. I like Sigma, apparently. That's a good lens. I used to have that one. Yeah, it's awesome. I got some really cool shots on my DC trip with it, which was a lot of fun. Tripod collar. That's for my 70-200 Mark II 2.8 IS. This is my this was my first like really expensive purchase, and uh, it's a really awesome lens, but. Like we were saying before, Derek, like you can you can easily get away with the Mark One version, which is a lot cheaper and still an excellent lens. I've got other it's stuff like in here. Like the bottomless pit. I know it's an awesome. It's like it's not it's not a very big bag, but no, it, can, it just it can hold all that stuff. That. Yeah, like a tarp. That's really cool. The, the problem with all these bags that can carry so much stuff is they let you get it all into the bag, but they're still heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's so heavy. That's why I want to move to Micro Four Thirds. 
And I've got my 430 EX2 Flash. I have... Here's the rain cover for the bag. Here is... Uh, I've got a remote. Here's a rain cover for the camera. All those look very unused, Dave. Well, the rain covers I haven't used, no. Yeah. I have a Canon S100, which is quite portable and lovely, which I actually shoot most of my video on now instead of my SLR because it's got the autofocus and it does 1080p. Got some lens cloths. And There's a hole under that bag. He's just reaching through under his desk. It's like a magician's trick, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, extra battery, okay. extra card. Now he's going to pull out a 600 millimeter prime. <laughs> no, I don't bring my 50 millimeter prime because it doesn't fit. But that's that's uh, not in my bag. But that's uh, that's pretty much it. Cool. Thanks for showing us. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, we can do a little show and tell now. People can show off some photos they've taken and and. Uh, can I just say something about the the um, the four thirds camera? Yes. Um, the day I got mine, I was just really happy. You know, especially when you've got little hands like mine. Um, I used to use my Canon. I only had a 10D, but I absolutely love it and still do use it. Um, but it, it's a really heavy body. And the, the four thirds cameras are really great. They're really funky and groovy and light and can fit into a handbag. Yeah, I think this is actually a really interesting vector for all these smaller cameras like the micro four thirds and the smaller Sony system and the Olympus because, you know, you could make the argument that about half the market out there is women. And you never see women, well, very rarely do you see women walking around with all this crap in their bags because, A, they don't. It's heavy, and B, they don't really have these hang-ups that guys have about carrying on a bunch of, like a big camera. Women don't see the need. Men very easily see the need, but women don't, especially if with the nice micro four-thirds, the Sonys or whatever, if you can get a really high-quality photo, they're like, well, why would I want to carry in that, that giant thing? So anyway, we, we might see a much faster adoption of these smaller cameras than we think because women do so much of the buying. <laughs> yeah, the women, I want the lighter camera too. I walked around with this bag in DC and it was awful. Well, I used to travel with the 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 low pro and I bought one of those which you can swing around and so it becomes like a pouch in the front because when you're traveling and you're traveling alone, um, you know, you want to keep all your equipment close to yourself. And um and I used to have the camera in there and then the point and shoot and the mobile phone and everything, and and then the wallet, <laughs> the lipstick, <laughs> and it just got you know too heavy, too much. I I iPod, headphones, the works, but it's sort of changed now. For me, it's like the lighter, the faster, the better. Yeah. Yeah. I also. I feel I also very inadequate though, looking at all no. these bags and thinking, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's like no. me a few years ago. <laughs> like you don't feel like you don't have to have all that crap to be a good photographer. You know, uh, you know. I think another interesting thing that I've noticed is that um, I don't know why this is, but I think everyone had a different kind of bag. You know, there's only very few camera manufacturers, but it doesn't seem like anybody has dominated the bag market. And I don't know why that is. I guess because there's just so many different needs for people that no one or two companies can dominate the bag market but it's it's strange in that in that way I think yeah. I just ordered a new bag and uh, <laughs> not, not while I was on my hangout I wasn't no no not during the hangout a little bit earlier but I, someone mentioned it I don't remember who it was um, but it's this this uh, think tank retrospective 7 um, it's small, so it holds an SLR and, you know, like three lenses and an iPad or a MacBook Air in the back pocket. So Yeah, you know, that's, what I, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, I've been waiting for this because they had the 10, which didn't hold, didn't have that pocket in the back. It had, you know, like some pocket in the front. 
Uh, and so I think this is going to be a really popular bag. I like Think Tank. I really like Think Tank bags. I have Time Rock. I've had, I even had it. Yeah, you can got uh, sucking in the buying when I first started out. The Canon backpack, which they sell, and um, all these different brands of bags. But the Think Tanks are far away my favorite. I just I've been waiting for them to come out with this one. They should sell a bag called the Introspective that makes you wonder why you buy so many bags. <laughs> that idea. Uh, okay, so let's share photos. Um, does anyone want to go first? Um, Tony or Ron or Eric? I, I, I'll, I'll go. Let me, I'll, okay, go ahead, Mike. I picked out a few for this year, so let's share a screen. Jump over there. Okay. So this was, uh, I was in the Bahamas in October, and we took this um, boat tour out to the middle of the Zuma Islands, and these are all like pretty much uninhabited islands. And we stopped on this little thing here. This is maybe no, this is maybe no more than a quarter of a mile square. This thing's really tiny, this island that we're on. But you're 40 miles from civilization for the most part, and kind of here, and it was just absolutely kind of, ridiculously amazing to have this crystal clear blue water. This storm was coming in. About five minutes after I took this, there were two water spouts on the other side of this hill here. Uh, the touchdown, and we saw that, ran back in the boat and hightailed it back for safety. Um, off here in the corner, I don't know if it shows up, but there's a, you see a little, it looks like a little house here on this island. And what's kind of cool with this is this island here is called Norman's K. And this was a drug dealer's... Uh, little slice of paradise back in the 80s. And so this would have been surrounded by guys with machine guns, and you would have never been able to get this close to it. Um, but it was uh, it's, it's kind of a cool little story with this that kind of little piece of uh, paradise here. And then um, this is just a shot from uh, Antelope Canyon from a few months ago. This is one recently in San Francisco airport. Uh, a friend of mine, Brandon Downey, he, he took a shot here, and it was really cool, just the light and the way it lights up this area here. And I felt I felt compelled to take one for myself. And then this one here is the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, during the photo walk before the Google Plus conference, uh, we kind of got suckered into going to the north side of the Golden Gate Bridge, and it was all foggy and windy. And uh, there wasn't too much opportunity, I think, for, for good stuff there. But then the fog kind of cleared a little bit and kind of got this little glimmer of the bridge. And I kind of like the way the fog was being blocked by the bridge up here, that you have this little cutout of it. But, yeah, just a few photos. Cool. Thanks, Mike. Um, Tony, do you have something you want to share with us? I'm actually not prepared to share this week. Oh. <laughs> Come next week. All right. Let's okay. Wait. It'll be like a fine wine. I'm sure your photos will just get better as they ferment. <laughs> yes. Maybe. Okay. Uh, Ron, do you have something you want to share with us? I'll show a couple of quick ones. Um, I, I, I said, like I said, I just got back from a quick trip up the Oregon coast, which is really gorgeous. And uh, if anybody you know, even has just a nice weekend. So I can get the screen sharing to work here. Uh, I, I, I had not actually imported nor done anything with my photos yet, so while we were doing this hangout, I quickly <laughs> exported a couple of them. But just real quick, I mean, the Oregon coast is just filled with beautiful things like this, with these rugged coastlines, the trees going right down to the water, um, you know, great sea spires and all that kind of stuff. And we were really lucky when we wandered out there was uh, quite a few of these seals kind of hanging out there. And, um, you know, you got to be careful not to get too close. You don't want to disturb them too much. But the little baby seals were, it was the time of year when they're still hanging out with their mothers a lot. And uh, just, you know, cute as, cute as hell, basically. But, you know, you, you kind of balance not wanting to get too close. I had a fairly long lens to get this one, and I cropped in quite a bit too. But um, very, very cute stuff. So, and, and then just in the interest of being extraordinarily self-promotional, I'll, uh, I'll show off a couple of pictures that uh, some of our freeze paint users have, have created. There's a Pinterest page on this, just freeze paint uh, favorites. And just because they've come up with some really kind of funny stuff, um, you know, like pictures of somebody's daughter in a basket, uh, or... Uh, bolts on somebody's head. 
freeze paint is, you know, it's sort of a real-time kind of compositing thing where you're, you don't have to deal with all the, this is me, that my niece did of me with somebody else's eyes on it. Uh, you don't have to go through all the pain of doing Photoshop, you like trans, you know, uh, transformations and all that. You can just real quickly kind of paint and layer stuff. I like this one a lot. It's a little lighthouse. It's just repeated multiple times. So that's me whoring myself out here and pipping my project again. <laughs> it's okay. I don't. I don't really consider it uh, pimping yourself. You know, if you made it and you're proud of it, you can show people. No one. Well, and that, no you know, that's that's a lot of the fun I get out of it too. Is it's a it's an interesting tool that's a little bit different. And so I'm I'm just excited to see people doing different things with it. So yeah. I dig that. Well, you know, it's actually I, I think about this a lot too because I I wonder we we do apps and things like that and I, but to me sometimes it feels like making an app is it that different than making a photo or just creating something with your with your hands and out of your mind and you know it's, it's almost no different than sharing a photo or a painting or, or anything because it's just sort of your own creation and nothing wrong with uh, talking about it I don't think wrong so well, and I, you know yeah and, and just I, I think enabling people you know if, you, if you're not taking your own photos enabling other people to take photos is really a fun sort of compliment to that too you know I love to do both and uh, but you know, getting tools into artists' hands is something I've been doing kind of throughout my whole career. You know, even when I was at Apple and working in film industry. So. Yeah, excellent. That's a good way to think about it too. Um, Eric, you've got some photos for us now. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not traveling as much now. I've been processing old photos, so I'm I think uh, I'm about five years behind, as probably many of you are. Um, but I just went back and processed a bunch of pictures from a trip to Africa, uh, one of the two okay. safaris I've done in my life. And actually, I took a, this is a LifePixel modified Canon 20D, which I had modified, I think, in 2006 or something. Uh, and so this is in 2007, went to Africa and photographed these elephants uh, on the plains there. And infrared, near infrared in Af there is amazing because the plains, you know, all the, the vegetation, the healthy vegetation, just reflects all infrared light. So it's all it's very white, and then these elephants are apparently absorb all the infrared light, so they're they're almost a pitch black, uh, and so it results in a really really stark look. And um, it was it was amazing to get to. And these are just these are black and white conversions with very little done to them, almost nothing. And this is pretty much what you get in infrared with the contrast jacked up. Um, it was pretty cool, and this was actually with with Andy Biggs on an exploratory trip, so I could get out of the the vehicle uh, a little bit, not with these elephants around, because that would have been terrifying. But um, to take shots like this, kind of close-ups of um, carcass, you know, from inside. Uh, these are shot with the 15 millimeter fisheye. Uh, so I posted. It was fun. I posted two or three pictures a day onto my Google Plus profile for like a month, and so I have this this album here with lots of pictures and um, it's a lot of fun. That's what I have right, to show. Thanks, Eric. Great. Cool stuff, as always. Um, Angela, do you have some stuff you want to share? Yeah, sure. I have um, new screen sharing. There's always this wonderful type whenever people screen share, you kind of like get to look into people's souls because they get really close to the camera and they just <laughs> kind of like stare into the camera <laughs> as their fingers share. And so it's like you accidentally get to see into people's innermost souls. And anyway, go on. <laughs> All right, well, I'm in the D.C. area, so this is uh, right by the Capitol in D.C. at sunset. Um, just one amazing day. Uh, it's at lower... Lower Senate Park in D.C. And then this one I took last year in Miami. Um, I think around September I took this shot, but I didn't process it until maybe December or something like that. So um, I really like this shot. This looks great printed out. Uh, this one I took earlier this year in January, and this is probably my most popular picture that I have of the Vietnam War Memorial, or Vietnam Veteran Memorial in D.C. at sunrise. That's gorgeous. Um, thank you. And then I have this capital shot um, that I took in February uh, during sunrise. Sunrise is like the best time to go shoot in D.C. so you don't get all the people and 
just amazing colors. Um, and this <coughs> one is in in Virginia at a Lusylvania State Park at sunrise. So all of those were HDR images, mostly all at sunrise. Yeah, so those are my pictures that I wanted to share. Cool. Thanks for showing us those. Um, Michelle, can, do you can have I just Can I just say for the record, that's why I like living on the West Coast, is because I get to take <laughs> sunset shots instead of having to wake up at sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, I'm exhausted right now because I'm just <laughs> going to sleep so early. I would be in bed right now, but I'm just so tired right now. Well, thanks for staying up with us. Um, oh, yeah. To show us those pretty cool. photos. Uh, Michelle, do you have something you want to share? Um, yeah. Okay. I will start with... Hang on. I see if that works. We see yes. it. Is it working? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, so that's, obviously I'm very proud of that one because it placed third in the IPPA in the people category. It's um, the iPhone Photography Awards um, and that was a real surprise. Um, and as always, I have my process there. It's iPhone, it's thematic, scratch cam, um, scratch cam, I, I actually tracked down the uh, maker of the app, his name is Steve Arnold and he's, he's actually in Australia, he's a Brit British chap who's moved um, from England to Australia, oh, it's really, um, his app is really well used for all the textures that it gives, um, has that changed? Yep. Has my yes. picture changed? Yeah. That one is another one. That's with Marble Cam. As you can see, I, I, I'm really, with the iPhone shots, I'm really happy to sort of just go to town on them and just like create different things. Um, so that's the latest one that I've done. Um, I was inspired by um, MC Escher, and um, he's got all these sort of um, orb like photographs. Uh, drawings that he's done um, and I'm actually uh, um, working on one with my hands that's going to try and imitate one of his graphics um, a lot so um, this this one I probably worked on the longest for an iPhone shot um, because I couldn't get you can tell I didn't get the um, I used superimpose and I didn't get the definition of the orbs as well as I could. Um, and this is also another one that I've, these are all different iPhone shots that I've placed all together using superimposed. Um, there are a lot of cable, cable photographs on Google Plus and um, we don't, we don't I, see the new one yet. We still see the bubble one. I see the new pardon? one. Pardon? Oh, okay. It updated for me. I'm sorry. Go on. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, I had a whole string of cable photographs, and um, I didn't know what to do with them because I didn't want to post them up on Google Plus. Um, so I thought I'd try something different. So I did a whole series called the High Wire series, um, basically a commentary about the risks that people take in life. Um, you know, I, I selected this one because I think this one a lot of people liked. Um, this is actually the fifth. And you can tell with a lot of my series, um, especially when I'm testing an app out or a style, it gets progressively more complex. So, you know, and this is when I actually, the finale is always when I actually understand the app really well. So, and I'm quite... Um, yeah, I enjoy the app stacking. And can you see the next one? Yes. 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 That, I'm still quite amazed with the power of the iPhone as a camera. So that's a less edited shot. Um, basically, I use the AEAF lock on the iPhone um, to get the focus. And because I do love, um, in all my sort of normal photography with a camera, um, I enjoy light a lot, so um, 
it was just something that I saw someone had left their, their glasses on and just the way the light captured. Oh. Uh oh, we lost her there. <laughs> uh, well, Dave, I know you have something to show. I'll, I'll show some right before you, and then we'll go into our discoveries, okay? Okay. All right, so let me share my screen here as you guys look into my soul. Beep up the thought. Where do I go? Look into his eyes. Where's my, here's my iPhoto. Okay. So um, I have four to show you. Uh, this is the first one. I showed the before of this one in San Francisco um, several weeks ago. Are you seeing it pretty much full screen, Dave? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I showed the before, and this is the, this is the after. Um, this is a spot um, that I've always wanted to go shoot. I found it in Stuck on Earth thanks to Thomas Hawk. He put this in sort of one of his secret spots, and I went there to go find it. I went to a slightly different position from him. He was like shooting straight down on the bridge, which is, which is another good shot, too. Um, here's the next one. This is my youngest daughter, and the reason I'm showing this is because I took it with a camera, or I took it with a, a, a lens that a lot of pros just really dislike, but I love it. This is the 28 to 300 uh, Nikon lens. And, you know, people say it doesn't have good depth of field, or it's not sharp, or does vignetting, or all this just stuff that nerdy photographers talk about. But I don't really see any of that. I mean, I think it came out pretty pretty good. She's just sitting there hamming it up, you know, and got a quick shot and, you know, it, it's probably not the best in low light, but I, um, I don't use that much in low light. Um, here is a, uh, a shot from a place that I stayed in. We, this is where I did a hangout, I think, about four weeks ago in the British Virgin Islands, a place called Amateras. And they sort of have this indoor-outdoor seating area. I took this one night at sunset. It's uh, it's really nice to sit out there and read and chill out. And so I stood up to take a photo while I wasn't reading. Um, and here's a shot. Um, I do have a behind the scenes of this one. Uh, this is uh, with a 600 millimeter lens in Hawaii. Um, I was with Tom, um, and uh, you know I'm not. Uh, I don't use that 600 very much, but it's really fun to use when the situation is right. So. Anyway, that's that. Let me <laughs> unscreen share my screen. Sorry Pretty about much. that. Is everything okay, Michelle? I always have to bring up my Facebook page before I can get back up into Google again. <laughs> Michael, Su Michael Sutton in the chat said Michelle's internet runs on Vegemite. Yeah, it must. It must. She must be too low to Vegemite. My hair's getting long. I gotta, that's not my to-do list, by the way. It's my personal note. i got to get it. Okay, Dave, you want to show us uh, a, a photo? Sure. I have one photo to show. Okay. Okay. So I shot this one yesterday. Um, I've just been playing around with my new macro lens a little bit, and... I figured I want to shoot a glass with liquid, so I got a martini glass, filled it with some red liquid, and shot it against the blue background with like a white placemat I had next to it, and used an LED flashlight and bounced it off the thing, and it came out okay, and I ended up uh, doing all kinds of processing to it and rotated it sideways and came out with this. I thought it came out pretty cool. I like it. That's cool. That's a good shot. You're, you're quite the artist, Dave, I must say. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Yeah, I dig it. All right, let's move right into discoveries. I'll, uh, I'll share mine. I, I shared this gal um, many, many months ago, but I want to share her again because we have all kinds of new viewers. And the audience is growing and all that kind of stuff, and I, I want, to, uh, want you guys to see her. Also, she's doing something special. Um, let me share my screen here. Okay, her name is uh, Danielle Tunstall. Um, she has this thing going on right now where you can win signed prints. Um, she does very unique kind of photography, um, kind of horror, very artsy type stuff. And I think it's a great contest to enter, so you guys should go enter it. If you want to see some of her photos, um, let me just go in here and just pick something. I don't know, you could pick anything. They're all 
they're all cool, really kind of dark and moody. And I mean, she's got everything going on with her photos. Let me see, which one should I look at here? Um, Stormtrooper. You want to see that the storm? I don't know what you want to see, Tony. You want to see a little bit of that action? Yeah, that one's wild, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Let's find something else weird here. I'm trying to find something with a bunch of her photos in. Like uh, these are all self-portraits. Um, just wild. I don't know how she comes up with this stuff. We go full screen here. Spacebar, by the way, goes full screen. Let me click on this to make sure I'm sharing it right. Oh, it's brilliant. She does very. Um, it's. I don't know what I, I call it conceptual photography. Yeah, I don't know what else to call. It. Yeah, it, it's 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 brilliant. <coughs> yeah, she's uh, she's very interesting. They're just fun to look at, I think, and not really talk about. I think that's why I love iPhone art. A lot. Um, I I do um, sort of mix in with the community. Then a lot of them do a lot of art like this. It, it, it is amazing what some of them do, and to see someone, yeah, I I I I'd circle her. It, it's really interesting stuff. Yeah, she's great. So yeah, go to her stream and uh, go try to win one of her signed prints. And uh, even if you don't win, you should go support your local internet artist and buy some of her prints and, and that sort of thing because uh, I think it's a fun way for us all to kind of uh, work together. Google Plus. So Michelle, you have something you want to share? Uh, a Google yes. Plus discovery? Yes, very, very important, very proud. She is a very good friend of mine. Her name is Louise Bagger. Um, let me um, screen share that. Uh, hang on. <laughs> I'm not good with the whole screen share thing. It's very tricky, isn't it? Uh, don't worry, Sergey Brin had trouble too the first time. <laughs> so you're, you're in good company. Um, I've got two tabs open and I can't get get the um, I can't get it uh, to separate out into another window. But her name is Louise Bagger. Um, she recently she's from Adelaide, um, as I said, a personal friend of mine, and um, she recently won two silver. Um, Silver Awards at the National Canon AIPP uh, competition um, for professional photographers. And um, uh, how do I do this? <laughs> if I okay, screen share, you, uh, you can practice it while other people are screen sharing. Um, see if you can try it. Uh, Angela, do you have one for us? Yeah, I have. Wait, we see it now, Michelle. Okay, go ahead. Oh wait, Sorry? we're seeing the hangout. I'm showing it too, if that helps. Okay, so everyone just open a new Dave, window. Dave, Dave has uh, Louise Bagger up. Yeah. Um, she won in two sections, the documentary section and also um, the landscape section. And she's only got 127 people in her circles. Um, <coughs> Extremely talented. Um, and I absolutely adore her. Her, her passion for photography, it, it just comes out like literally from all her pores. Um, she's, she is a professional photographer. Um, and yeah, if uh, everyone wants to see really great work, um, different stuff. Um, she's also on Facebook, Louise Bagger Photography. That's my shameless plug of my friend. But I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't do that unless I really believed in someone. And um, um, she's um, obviously not as uh, media savvy as I am. I, I'm like the eternal 
trying out all the sorts of social media platforms that um, I actually was the one who persuaded her to get on Google. <coughs> so, yeah. So there you go. All right, good. Yeah, she's very interesting. Thank you, Michelle. All right, Angela, to you. Yeah, um, when I was actually first starting to, you know, really get into photography uh, professionally, I asked this guy, Douglas Saunders, if I could shadow him one day. Can you see my screen? No? No, we see you. Okay. Um, but I wish he'd post more on Google Plus than what he does. But he has some really cool um, shots. Uh, he does a lot of commercial work. So this is one of his older images, I think. But he just has a lot of like car photography and portraits and um, uh, how do I go back to these pictures? But he has, I just always like looking at his work. He has some great emotions in his portraits. And uh, uh, they're really different than what I've seen before. So that looks was like fun. Ricardo Lagos down there, the bottom right. <laughs> Are you talking about this one? These pictures? No, the guy with the glasses and the beard. Yeah. Him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, him. Yeah, that, that one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I really like uh, Douglas Saunders' work. Cool. Thanks, Angela. Yeah. Um, who's next? How about you, Mike? So I want to show something. Uh, Tom Hogarty, who's the PM for Lightroom over at Adobe, was over at Google last week. And he showed me something that kind of made something with HDR and Lightroom, which I had never seen before. And so I'm going to try and do it so I can do a little demo of this because it's kind of it's really cool. Uh, let's see how I show my desktop. Uh, over here. Okay. Let's see if this works. You guys see Lightroom? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So in merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. After some waiting, a window. Stop window waiting. That was fast. Mm -hmm. We uh, were in Lightroom, by the way. A a a after, after do, you, do you guys see the Photoshop window now? No, we only see Lightroom. No. Just Lightroom. Okay, hold on one second then. Let me see if I can switch the screen. <laughs> I'm having serious technical difficulties here. Uh, I thought Michelle, I should press, have press screen share on the top left. Okay, thanks. Ta-da. <sighs> okay. Let's see. It's not, it's not the spider no, dying. Anyway, okay. So, so uh, anyway, you'll get the Merch HDR Pro. Rather than tone mapping the image there, uh, you want to go over and click Mode 32 bits, and then just save the image. Don't do anything to it. The, images will, the image will pop back up in Lightroom. And I'll go back to Lightroom this time. Uh, and you get something really, really, really cool. So here's the image that came back from Photoshop. Um, it looks just like the even exposure, but check this out. With Photoshop, with Lightroom 4.1 now, if I click on the exposure here, check this out. I can actually go up to plus 10. Plus 643, plus 714, and you actually have detail all the way in there. It's actually, it's actually generated a really awesome 32-bit image that you can actually edit as if you actually took it directly. And you can take this all the way down just to the point where you have just a little bit. So you can actually get really cool photorealistic HDR images without actually using anything other than what you have there. And it just kind of opens up to really take advantage of uh, the bracketing shots without having me get like that typical tone map look. So I've kind of been playing with this and people can't even actually tell their HDR sometimes because they just look like they're so natural. That's cool. We're going to, Dave, we're going to get Tom on one of our future shows, right? Yes, hopefully in July, which uh, I think I emailed you about earlier. I'm not sure. Yes, it's it's one of our 15 different threads we have open. Dave. Yes, <laughs> we will we will get Tom on at some point. I promise. That's uh, something I want to do. Um, now, all that remains is Eric. Is that right? Sure. Very cool. <clears throat> all right. Uh, here we go. So I just found this this tonight, uh, right before the um, this hangout, and uh, this is Andrew Walker. He doesn't look like he really has much stuff 
on Google+, Plus, but somebody shared a video that he posted um, on Vimeo, which is this video, and I just posted it to my Google Plus profile, so if you go there, you'll see it. Um, it's just called Eclipse, but w w this is at the, you know, that annular solar eclipse that happened on May 20th. Um, and um, he shot this using an Epic X, using a Canon 800 millimeter lens, and I won't even play it here because it won't do it justice, but, you know, before you go to sleep, it's just a few minutes long, three minutes long, check this thing out, you know, turn off all your lights and kind of, you know, turn the the audio up. It is an incredible uh, video of this this uh, solar eclipse that just happened a few weeks ago. And I hope he gets on Google Plus and starts posting. Cool. That's a good good find. Thank you. And then you were not last. Ron is last. So Ron, who do you have for us? Yeah, this is a, a guy that I just sort of came across the other day when I was kind of trolling around. But he does underwater studio photography. Uh, this is probably the favorite one that I've got that he does. And you can see that it's, uh, you know, obviously a well choreographed kind of shoot that just happens to also be underwater. Uh, I'll quickly pop through a few of these and uh, get to another favorite one. It just gives a really interesting kind of look. I love this one where he's kind of using the internal reflections of the water surface layer uh, flipped to the side, a lot of great color. So his name is Rafael Machiella. R A F A L M A K I E L A, and I just you know just just the whole act of shooting underwater like this and the choreography and the planning that it must take to get some of these shots I find extremely impressive. It's really really pretty stuff. And then I also <coughs> really quickly wanted to show one other photographer who's not on Google Plus, but I came across her while I was looking at uh, some of this stuff, and her name is. Uh, Barbara Cole, and she also does underwater photography, but she uses it sort of shooting from above to get these really impressionistic effects. Like, can you guys see that there? Oh, yeah. that's awesome. That's amazing stuff, you know, where you, you, at first glance, you would swear that this is a, a watercolor painting or some impressionistic kind of thing, and, you know, clearly she's, I, I suspect, using some slow shutter stuff, taking the ripples of the water into effect. Um, just these really gorgeous kind of things where the light's very subtle. Um, I'll show one more here. You know, even that, which is just great planning on it, kind of a yin-yang kind of thing going on. Uh, Ron, what's her name again? Her name is Barbara Cole, C-O-L-E -E is the last name. And um, yeah, just, I mean, just Google her and you, you'll see. She's, she's apparently a, ver a very well-known artist. Uh, but not on Google Plus as far as I could tell. But I just wanted to point people to it because it really kind of stopped me in my tracks when I first saw it and realized that it was a photo and not a painting. It's beautiful work. Wow. That's cool. cool yeah. Find. It really makes you want to go out and do, you know, do something like that. You know, it's, uh, in, in my mind, that's one of the marks of a really great photo that's sort of out of the ordinary like this is... You just your your brain starts going. You're like I, I could I could do you know, I could do something like that. I don't know if I can come up with like, <coughs> good of a photo, but just the technique itself is so fascinating too. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, thank you everybody for coming. I uh, will bring this show to a close now. I'll go ahead and plug uh, next week's show. Next week we have on. Um, it's going to be a kind of a special show about some very creative artists that are doing weird things with photography. Uh, one of them is uh, Paul Rustin, who you guys probably know as the body painter from, from New York. And then also, kind of matching up with him, I'm matching uh, a wonderful artist from Australia. Her name is Alexia Sinclair. Uh, she just came out with this amazing new iPad app that shows off her work. And when you when you see the kind of photos she does, uh, you'll be amazed, and I'll, I'll have her talk through her creative process. So I think these two will be really fun on together, and, uh, and we'll see what, uh, what they bring for us. It'll be, it'll be great. Um, and then to officially bring the show to a close today, uh, I think it's best if we show some pigs on the beach. And whenever I think of that, there's only one person we can turn to, and it's Eric Cheng, who's known for these photos of all things. Tell us, tell us a story about these. <laughs> these, uh, these, are, these are pigs, and they're swimming, and they're in the Bahamas. And um, there's a the beach you can go at. Um, it's called Big Major 
a big major island, I think. And uh, we stop there sometimes when we're doing shark work out there. And the pigs, when they see the boat coming, will they're not related to the shark work we do. <laughs> but the pigs will come swimming out to the boat because uh, the locals will come, come feed them. And there's, you know, there are like two or three big pigs and a bunch of piglets. And it's some of the most fun I've ever had in the water, uh, for, you know, taking pictures of animals. They just they come up to you and um, it does hurt when they, if they step on you because they, <laughs> they do weigh a lot. Uh, but it just makes everyone smile who sees this picture because it's such a bizarre thing to see. <laughs> are they, are they wild? So awesome. They're, as far as we can, I mean, I think they're wild. They're domestic roots, but um, they don't seem to be, you know, no one comes in and, and takes care of them as far as I know. Um, someone made a salted brine joke, which is a little bit sad. <laughs> but <laughs> well, show us a couple more. I think these are a big hit. Okay. Um, you have access to them. Yeah, I got them. Let's see. All right, here is a piglet shot here. It's not letting me full screen it, so I will. Hold on a second. I lost him. <laughs> They're in here somewhere. Hold on. Too many it's okay. Shots. We're getting to see all your other awesome stuff. Too. All right. Here we go. All right. So this is the first time I went. Um, and, the, you know, these, these pigs, uh, it won't let me show it full screen. Last try here. Here we go. Yes. Okay. So the first time we went, there were these two pigs there, big ones. Uh-huh. Wow. So crazy. Oh, sorry, that's not a pig. Hold on. I got a pig somewhere. And the sharks haven't discovered where the pigs hang out, correct? No, I, 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 they must not be able to get them. Or, or <laughs> yeah, because that's probably the first yeah, place I'd go. Buffet. They should get yeah. up there. Yeah. Now, this, this piglet, remember that first shot with the two pigs there? This piglet, we think, is the, you know, the offspring of those two pigs because it's exactly between the two. Hmm. And this, you know, we saw this like two years later. I think that's what I have on here of the pigs. There's a lot of shark stuff. Excellent. Cool. Well, thanks, Eric. That makes everyone happy. Pigs in the water. <laughs> well, thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, thanks for staying up late, Angela. Do you have to wake up for another summer tomorrow no. to give us another stunner? And thanks, everyone, very much for coming. Thanks, Tony and Dave and, and everybody. So uh, anyway, just wave goodbye from your little box. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.